Welcome back. New projections tonight show the sea level rises accelerating in Tampa Bay, touching off profound consequences that will affect your daily life from your cost of living to your family's health. Tonight in our new Full Circle Report, ABC Action News anchor Paul Legrone is exploring all sides of this impending problem and the deep impact it will have on our growing community. Michael, Irma, Matthew. Three major hurricanes in three years hit Florida, killing nearly 130 people and costing the state hundreds of billions of dollars. But it's not just episodic disasters like hurricanes that are threatening the way of life in Tampa Bay. This is the first time it's been this high in years. It's also the creeping, unpredictable, and long-term effects of sea level rise. Every few months it gets probably up to here. Kim Caswell lives on St. Pete Beach. She says when the king tide rolls in, the streets turn into canals. It was not flooding nearly to the extent and with the frequency that it does now. So those are the key messages in this new recommendation. Last month, local climate scientists presented their new projections for sea level rise in Tampa Bay. Their conclusion, it is accelerating. They found the Tampa Bay region could expect to see an additional 2 to 8.5 feet of sea level rise by the end of the century. That's at least a foot higher than their estimate just four years ago in 2015. The report says higher water levels will cause chronic flooding, shoreline erosion, threats to drinking water, and loss of ecosystems. And Tampa Bay acts like a funnel. So when you have sea level rise and storm surge on top of it, that puts people in jeopardy. Susan Glickman works with the Tampa Bay Regional Resiliency Coalition. The group brings together local leaders to plan for climate change. Everything from hardening infrastructure and investing in flood control to how to evacuate at a time of more frequent, stronger hurricanes. We're seeing sea level rise, we're seeing more intense hurricanes, and we're seeing droughts and wildfires. So the debate over whether or not it's happening has really uh, gone to the sidelines. I don't buy into these dire predictions that uh, we're all going to be drowning uh, more sooner than later. Dr. Robert Weisberg is an oceanographer with the University of South Florida. Do you think paradise is going to look much different in 50, 60, 70 years? You know, it probably will look different. The question is how much different will it look? He says people tend to focus too much on the worst case scenario, often overlooking the lower range of projected sea level rise. I am of the opinion that unless there are catastrophic changes, we will continue to see a slow rise in sea level. Dr. Weisberg says the more immediate threat to Tampa Bay is increased development along the shoreline, where the storm surge is only getting stronger. You know, as human beings, we have to be smart about what we're doing, and I don't think we are. Why do we continue to build right near the water on the coastline? Private property rights. <laughs> People want to do what, uh, what they feel is desirable on their property. Jennifer Dorfel is the executive vice president of the Tampa Bay Builders Association. Should developers have a responsibility when it comes to mitigating climate change? Yes and no. Flooding is no different than any other um, act of nature. I mean, you're not going to just stop building in the Midwest because of tornadoes. But climate experts say it's not where you build, but how. They point to the Netherlands as the model for how to engineer your way around sea level rise. One third of the country lies below sea level, yet it almost never floods because the Dutch have invested billions in flood control. This could be Florida's future. Or it could be this. Houston after Hurricane Harvey. Researchers found the city's sprawling urban landscape directly contributed to the deadly flooding. So they're filling swamps and putting houses there. If we're going to do that, well, then let's not blame it on climate change. But experts say if the science doesn't convince you that Tampa Bay is sitting on a potential problem, perhaps the economics will. That same report given to local leaders says Tampa Bay, with its 700 miles of shoreline and 3 million residents, stands to lose $15 billion in real estate value and 17,000 jobs as a direct result of sea level rise. And recent headlines reflect the growing economic concern for all of Florida. 
One prominent climate analyst made news when he said it's insane to own property in Florida, predicting that rising insurance premiums could lead to an economic crash in the Sunshine State. Joseph Rocks in Oldsmar is already feeling it. He's one of thousands of Tampa Bay residents just added to FEMA's newly proposed flood maps. That makes me worried because if they keep going up here, we'll have to sell. It's not a simple problem and it's not a simple answer. I went running and when I came back, I couldn't even get home. I mean, climate is always changing, always has changed, it always will change. So where do lawmakers stand on this issue? Well, in what amounts to a first for the state of Florida, Governor Ron DeSantis is now accepting job resumes for a newly funded position that would help Florida prepare for climate change. Paul Legrome, ABC Action News.